Ah, welcome to another edition of What the Fuck, happenings in sort of places, and other stuff uh, happening here in Mendham. So yeah, I'm um, messing with an Android, um, you know, thing. <laughs> so turn the camera on and we'll see how well it records and such. And see if there's uh, ghosts or something. Not too bad. Well, could be looking at something better, probably. Uh, and um, such. <laughs> the mouse is, uh, I'm using a Bluetooth mouse because the screen is cracked in places anyway. And uh, yeah, so it's the only way I can get out of the camera, actually, is because the crack is. The, the, the camera buttons don't move when you turn the screen, which is <laughs> really stupid. Uh, the image turns, but the camera doesn't turn. So anyway, um, so the point of doing this is, is in future, I plan on, I can attach external cameras, and I have a couple of different kinds of cameras, magnifiers and whatnot to that, so I should be able to produce something interesting, maybe. Even has a time lapse uh, and, you know, app and all kinds of interesting stuff to play with eventually, someday. I'll get to that stuff. But anyway, this is just a test. I know the microphone sucks, so that's something I'm going to have to work out. i got to find a proper jack thing, whatever. Uh, I wanted to try this pause and hit that. Okay, am I back? Or was I never gone? It's always a tricky question. Uh, are we ever really here? Or are we just where we think we are? which may not be the actual here. That sort of is a philosophical question that sort of is kind of uh, important. The evil Anna Kantavad has been talking about such things, in a way, in terms of perspective. But I'll get to that when I hopefully have a better microphone. So we'll see. This is just a test, so I won't keep... I won't drag this out any longer than necessary. But... Um, yeah, it would be fun to be able to do all my everything from one of these little androids in the sense that, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's uh, you know, 11 watts, it's a lot cheaper, um, and such. But, yeah, it's interesting. Okay, stop this. Now, ah, back. Um, probably not the best time to be back because I just realized my coffee is ready and such. So anyway, um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, not the subjects, and, uh, you know, so I've been doing the three-question thing, and that's gone okay. Well, I guess I should do if there's any drama first. All right, yeah, let's get that over with. Uh, no, there isn't any. <laughs> I haven't even watched all the fake Sagan videos yet. He always throws some sort of little snarkyism in each one about me, I guess, but, um, I just really couldn't care less. Um, didn't, didn't watch his truck driving for Jesus video yet. Um... <laughs> or whatever it is, uh, you know, I don't don't know exactly what he does in the video, uh, or says, um, but yeah, I suppose it would be interesting to know, so I'll have to get to that, uh, maybe, uh, but anyway, and, uh, drunken peasants I don't think have mentioned me, so, yeah, I guess I'm not going to be a, a guest, um, see, yeah, I haven't heard from Paul or anything, so, um, who knows, future blah 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 uh, doesn't, you know. <sighs> I was thinking I'd rather uh, get a you know some, something better like if I get a Sam Harris gig or something that would be a lot cooler <laughs> you know so I have to I have to you know I have to do more interacting with um, more sophisticated and fancier people I suppose uh, well, I have to attempt to, because, you know, obviously I don't have very good interacting skills. Yeah, I like this mirror. I have to come up with a way to use it to do something really cool. I haven't figured out what that would be yet, though. Okay, anyway. Um, lots of distractions here. So many things to, to do and play with in terms of um, lots of experiments I want to do. Um, so anyway... Yeah, 
um, yeah, just wait, you know, there's just way too much stuff happening all at once, and then I got all this stuff here, and, you know, life and whatnot, and, uh, so, anyway. So, philosophically, um, yeah, so, um, you know, Piero made a video, and, you know, I really don't want to make a, uh, an entire response video to it, because it's sort of on some of the questions I've been trying to write, so for the three question thing, I've been trying to come up with some some better ways to phrase some questions. So, um, you know, one of the questions I want to ask and get to is the whole um, how many, um, you know, how many dead lion cubs is uh, satisfactory for one living one? Uh, same kind of question would be how many kids have to go blind from lack of vitamin A? Or how many kids have to be born retarded before you say it's not worth it anymore? And it sort of gets to a, a Puro commentary where he's doing this life justification thing, and he does it based on percentages. You know, if, if if you only have five hours of pain, you know that's only five hours out of five million hours of a life, or something like that. And it kind of no, <laughs> you know, uh, very little perspective on um, just how how important circumstances are to when and how we experience our suffering and in what context um, you know uh, in terms of making it uh, worthwhile to us and more importantly um, the bigger question is is when you're imposing it on somebody else do you really have a right to tell them what it's worth that's the more interesting well it's a more interesting question it's the deeper you know start digging you start hitting those kinds of rocks in terms of this isn't going to be as simple as just asking a question. Um, but the whole idea of us profiting, it just seems kind of funny, that's because that's Piro's theory, essentially, is that we're, we're creating all this value, like we've, we're digging real gold in when we're living, and we're, like there's a real resource that has real value when we're doing this pursuing of our, our chasing of comfort and uh, it's certainly worth something in the sense that it's okay to have some sort of um, disaster tied to it, a payment. And uh, I'd argue that when people are paying that's not going to be as true. So when you have the actual cancer it's going to be a lot harder to see the, the value you're really working for. All you're going to see is your fear of death and a few other things like that but you're really not going to see that, oh yeah, this is worth it. Uh, I mean, the good days were just so great that, yeah, they certainly pay for this. Um, you're going to see it a bit differently, I think. And um, so it's a pretty, it gets into complex psychology. But just the idea, when I was thinking about the idea of the fact that by Piro standards, um, you know, just living your life and fighting and struggling, trying to get somewhere, trying to get to the mirage where you might get the drink of water is somehow all good and it's so good that it makes up for um, broken legs or whatever kind of, you know, some blight that you tie to it, some price you have to pay for it. So if you really were at the life store and you could just buy events going to Disneyland or doing this or doing that and you had to actually pay with some sort of um, the average <laughs> you know um, suffering going to be tied to that um, yeah that maybe you wouldn't pay too much for some of this crap um, and certainly you wouldn't pay for it in the sense that it's the payment is basically a risk payment so um, you know, very few will pay very much, and most will pay nothing, maybe, kind of an idea. And so it's the fair game is to recognize that you're really buying a risk when you buy an adventure, and it's how big the risk is. And uh, uh, and I, thought, I think in the real world, the risks are much higher than we appreciate. I mean, the, the amount of people who are suffering for your joy um, is a much larger number than you realize as you live your life uh, because you feel good and you don't bother thinking about all the people who right now aren't feeling so good 
and how dramatically bad their bad is compared to how uh, incredibly meager your good is. Um, might be a way of saying it, but anyway, doesn't. Lots of ways you can say it. Um, so anyway, um, but Piero's never answered, you know, certain critiques of his philosophy in terms of thinking we are doing so much better now, because even by his own standards, um, people aren't living healthier lives in the sense that yes, they're living longer but they're spending a lot more time disabled and dying. And they die many times now, you know, of many diseases. They just don't do the final dying, you know what I mean? They do the dying part, they just don't do the being dead part. They only do that part once, but they do the dying part a few times before they get to the actual dying for real thing. And so therefore the quality of our life is not better in the sense that the average living thing is not in an average better state. The average amount of time is now diluted by the extra amount of time we spend in a less than healthy condition. Um, but anyway, that's you know I've mentioned that before. It's a it's an interesting consequence of progress where we think we are progressing. But in a sense, we have lost focus on what we should be after, which is the quality of life, not the length of life. And um, that's sort of getting lost. And, you know, people talking about a 70-year-old a retirement age or 75, and it just, you know, life gets bleaker and bleaker uh, to some extent. Um, you know, especially for the people who don't find work, um, their job to be... Um, fun. <laughs> you know, uh, the people who don't have fun jobs. Uh, so, and this all kind of bangs into Anta Kondavad's made a couple of videos on uh, perspective and um, uh, and he, he used the term that's often used, human nature, and I was thinking about that term and saying, well that's really a useless pile of shit. Um, because there is no such thing as human nature in a sense that it has no specific diagram beyond the general um, attributes which are need machine, you know, essentially. We, we're wanting um, things, but what we want is really, really mutable. And so this is kind of the thing Anakondavad ignores, and he just has like some sort of generic animalistic definition of what um, the native human is and is using that as a characterization of human nature. Um, so something that's selfish and brutish and takeish, when obviously human nature for more elegant, educated humans, human nature is going to the ballet or the opera. Um, and, you know, sticking your pinky out and being witty and clever in your conversation and all that kind of stuff and that's that nature doesn't necessarily have anything um, malicious or um, crude or brutish or selfish even built into it it has a lot of um, grand thinking and uh, um, even profound idealism and hope all of these things are things that are now our nature um, because we're capable of having them as a as a motivating force, as a principle, or as an ideal. And so these are, to say that human nature is um, selfish is as selfish does or something, and that's all we are. And we can't ever think outside of these boxes, and we can't ever perform outside of them, and we can't even be aware of our own liabilities. Uh, we, we can learn from experience. People have learned that hey, I don't handle my booze very well. I better stop drinking. They figure it out. And they do something. They change um, their nature. Um, they become a different kind of living organism. They, like me, might stop eating meat or they might do something else. And it has nothing to do with any selfish agenda. It has nothing to do with Hitler forces coming to draconianly take over the world or any other kind of crap 
just has to do with a rational observation that something's not working and there's no point in investing what, in what doesn't work. And uh, But the anaconda odds will come back with some sort of thing, like somehow the he'll always have some sort of excuse to make, like the, the mass murderer or the mass rapist is somehow going to cure cancer, or he has some sort of value, like there'll be something, he'll be generating some sort of contribution in some way that, that we'll miss out on if we eradicate that bad germ from our genome, so to speak, our are, are uh, being naturally human. Um, and if, I think, of course, since we've changed the environment we exist in, we should be able to change our nature. We're adaptable organisms. That's the, the biggest and best part of us, so to speak, is the fact that we can adapt to uh, a better truth, a more certain, uh, rational perspective. And we can act on it. And his whole prohibition against that action, and even against the judgment that forms it, um, is, again, just in my opinion, a cop-out for a purpose. There's agenda behind his, um, his excuses, his fear, you know, of the um, organized or, or systematized or standardized or even you could use the word legitimized the the idea of being civilized he doesn't like that as a concept this oppression of imposing you know on the <coughs> um silly um diversity that we're capable of and most of our diversity is silly most of the the silly religious arguments are silly. Um, they're, you know, comparing Goldilocks to Red Riding Hood. And, you know, the competitions between our sports teams or something. These are, these are all wastes of energy, wastes of resources, and they can be identified as that. And these things aren't going to... These, <laughs> you know, and, and again, it's, it's this fear of any concept of evaluation of what's in a kind of a social interest or... Um, you know what can be rationally argued to be cost effective and it's those 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 words are just poison just like acid to his brain this idea that you would do some measurement of cost effective um but it, it the truth is is the words are only caustic when they um might tend to have that eye point at him He's, he's okay at judging. He does plenty in his life, and there's plenty of civilization that he wouldn't want to do without. And um, he's just selective and uh, in a hypocritical way uh, to evade his own um, obligations because he doesn't want to hear about those. He doesn't mind want to, he does, you know he doesn't mind hearing about the ones that obligate other people not to break into his house and rape and murder. Um, but yeah, he doesn't want to hear about the ones that might involve him upping his game and, uh, you know, um, being obliged to be more, um, considerate of what are obvious trespasses that have just not been recognized for what they are, which are obvious trespasses, obvious arrogances and, um, unqualified uh, unproven axioms of life. Um, life is good. Well, no, it's a little more complicated than that. Life is very, very bad uh, if you're unlucky. Uh, you know, if you make a couple of wrong moves, it can turn insidiously bad. And um, that's the truth. And the Pyrrhos and the Anaconovads are the evaders of that truth. Um, uh, Anaconovads more honest, I'd say, in his evasion. I mean, it's more obvious. And Pyrrho plays a game like I'm a, I'm a liberal progressive who believes in talking a good game but never enforcing a good game. 
So he'll keep talking about things like, well, I have a right to impose life as long as I give people the right to die. But he never gives people, he never makes sure people have the right to die before, okay, <laughs> he makes more people. So it's the same old argument I've made before in terms of even politics. He keeps, he keeps trying, he keeps driving over bridges he never built. So, you know, the, the it's just a, a completely fake uh, idealism where he builds fake roads to fake utopias um, because they'll never happen until you do build the road and uh, he never gets that part right um, horses then the cart you don't do it the other way around um, so yeah I didn't you know, ended up being a, a, a video rather than a what the fuck video but shit like that'll happen so let's see if there's any other subject I have to take care of uh, so I'm just you know so the update is I'm working on uh, three more questions and just I want to get them to get into this whole theme of if you were God kind of thing if it really was on you if you had to go face to face with your victims you know every kid who got cancer and so it was your your responsibility to explain to them why you're all doing something so special that they should be horribly miserable for it <laughs> you know when they're protesting you know um yeah yeah uh you can't hear the dead scream kind of a thing <laughs> you know so you got to give them a voice um in some other way um, in terms of thought experiments or something to make them somebody you can hear and see if you can say it to their face that you just don't give a fuck uh, you'll take what you want and you just don't care uh, that somebody else will pay the price for it because <clears throat> it's just so overtly um, uncivilized indecent rude, obnoxious, selfish, just overtly selfish, <laughs> yeah, uh, for you to enjoy the comforts of not being paralyzed, and then tell somebody who is paralyzed that uh, his pain is worth it, yeah, fuck you, um, I think, again, this all has to go back to psychology, because certainly you can find lots of people who are paralyzed who say, life is good, life is good, you know, that's not the point. The point is, is the ones who aren't full of shit, <laughs> you know, and, and pretending they're winning, um, it's those uh, that you have no consolation for, except to say, fuck you, your pain is not my pain, I don't have to, I don't have to account for it, I'll just take... Well, I can't, yeah, I won't even go into, I mean, some of the things he says in his videos are just so preposterous. Um, it's, it's like he considers his sperm freely living organisms for which he doesn't have to account for. <laughs> you know, they make babies, he doesn't do it. Kind of bullshit. Um, just, just amazing nonsense. Uh, so anyway, what else? probably might have been something else uh, yeah so it has been interesting the people's feedback on the questions and the new questions have been interesting and I will attempt to form something out of it I have started to organize some of it into a one of these whatever things that I make that not too many people pay much attention to but anyway um, so yeah I'll, I'm working on stuff Just gotta work on it more efficiently so I don't think there's much, you know, the rest of it's, you know, I'm just working on some physics crap and uh, just, uh, you know, thinking. Uh, Jared, her nice guy, sent me a pack of cigarettes, so thanks for that. <laughs> some Ambisol or whatever it is for my, <laughs> I guess as I mentioned in a video, I had a bad tooth one day. I have a lot of bad teeth, so, but, you know, some days they're not very, um, cooperative with my function. Anyway, um, yeah, it's just, uh, getting old sucks. Um, 
yeah, mostly. And um, so I don't know if there's anything else. Uh, yeah, no point in contriving anything. So I do. I mean, I have, I have some questions, but I'm just not satisfied that I, they're well enough written yet. Um, and you know, what's the urgency, right? Another day or two, who cares? Uh, I can't. You know, it's amazing how time just kind of skips by. Um, yeah, it just wasn't a very productive week for me in a lot of ways that you wouldn't. <laughs> yeah, I can't point out anyway, so what's the difference? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm just so, um, just too many things. Got to narrow my focus. Uh, but it's hard to do that. Hard to sacrifice things you're interested in and say, I have to devote myself to one thing or two things or four. But anyway, there's enough of that. So, uh, perhaps an add-on, or perhaps not. Uh, if not, till next time, and if there is, then it will be as it will be. Alright, well, a little bit of an add-on, maybe. Keep it shortish, maybe. So I've been watching some of this fake Sagan live roomy stuff that he's been doing. And, <laughs> you know, it's kind of... You know, it's, it's always sloppy philosophy done, you know, when you're doing it off the top of your head, so we can't take it all too seriously, because people don't think about what they're saying, and they just say shit. Um, but yeah, Jesus Freak just showed up here, which is hilarious. <laughs> I wonder if they did on the subject of uh, Jesus Freak's gun collection, uh, paid for by Fake Sagan, the guy who can't pay his rent, you know, he says he can't pay his rent this month, and he's gonna have trouble. Um... You know, he's, he's got a bank account story. Um, but anyway, um, so so he just every periodically, you know, whatever, every 15 or 20 minutes, I have to come up in some stupid way. And there's these stupid comments. And, you know, something about some sort of dysfunction in my personal life, which, you know, again, my life with other people. I've never, he said something about restraining orders and all this other stuff. And then he's, he's talking about people having, you know, small penises or, as somebody else put it, uh, dysfunction, old penises, and that being the cause of their anger issues and all this kind of stuff. And it's just kind of funny because Fake Sagan has all these anger issues, so you know, maybe he has a, an erectile problem. <laughs> and that's why he has to hit women and blah, blah, blah. So, I mean, he's just stepping into his own bombs um, of his psychoanalysis. It is a psycho analyzing. <laughs> it really is kind of, it's just all quite funny. Um, but anyway. Um, but yeah, the idea that I have, like I said, you know, there's just no no restraining orders. No, I haven't been arrested since I was a kid. Um, you know, so I haven't even been in a physical fight in, you know, at least 30 years. It's just, you know, just stupid. Um, and, um, yeah, I mean, I can't, you know, frankly, you know, people come to me to, to for advice, and uh, they come to me to help, and that's what I do. I don't ever, I don't create enemies, you crazy fuck, um, in my social life. And if I have a philosophical disagreement with somebody, then we figure out how not to talk about what we're not going to talk about. I mean, I have a neighbor who's a Mormon. Okay, and we've had a few disagreements, and some of them are heated and ended with a fuck you and all that kind of crap because, you know, they are they have this thing against gays and all this other crap that, that's just bullshit. So you just stay away from those subjects. I mean, I worked for people that were Catholics, you know, and they had a, they're had they all fetus lovers. And so I knew, like, just stay away from the fetus subject. So I'm able to do all of that crap. I can negotiate the world when I have to. Um, it is unpleasant. Uh, but anyway, but yeah, I, I, you know, I mean, I, I show up on the environmental day to, you know, clean up the environment. I do these kind of things. So it's just, you know, this is just such a bullshit rag that, um, um, that my issues have something to do with my capacity to socially interact. It's just crap. I've never been a threat to anybody else but me. So it's just, it's just such a shitty... Uh, lazy, <laughs> creepy, stupid, 
It's a rude accusation. That's it. That's the word I was looking for. It's just fucking rude when you have no evidence to just make these these um, silly suggestions and place them in other people's heads. And, you know, like we all haven't had enough of that, you know, where the same subject has to be talked about for seven years and this subject was never a subject. But because some troll um, keeps saying it, it sticks in other people's heads and this is this is the this is how trolls win and it just kind of sucks so then you have to spend your time wasting your time defending yourself against an accusation that's groundless <laughs> and the more you defend yourself the more you just keep talking about something that I shouldn't talk about because unless I bring people on to testify then you'll just say well I paid them to testify I mean it's just no point so anyway, I guess we can play some of this just for the fun of it. I have it sped up a bit. Sex for women increases their testosterone production temporarily. Female fighter status. Oh, yeah, that's uh, Adam Simpris. Oh, he's hanging out with fake Sagan. Jesus Christ. Anyway, um... Jeez, <laughs> people. Um... <laughs> it's just disappointing. Uh, yeah, my misery and me guy has to. Some, you know, he answered one of my three question videos. And he has to, you know, three six hour long questions. Um, but anyway, I'll get to that. Um, not, they're not that bad, but they're, um, well, they're terrible questions. You, rationally, they they have no, you know, they're just mush. But I will try to unravel the mush and, uh, you know, explain the problem of the mush. The other thing I wanted to point out, I mean, people are just so goddamn stupid. Um, all right, so so Sanders and Trump end up running for the presidency. Who do you vote for? Like, there was some doubt. My argument isn't, I, I mean, sir, I, vote, I would have voted for Hillary, so clearly I would vote for Sanders over Trump. I would vote for actual anything, an actual pile of cat shit. I would vote for it before Trump. Anything, a herpes. All right. If they, if there was a choice, Trump for president, or AIDS is not eradicated. All right, I won't go that far. Um, but a big bucket of AIDS virus. I would make the bucket of AIDS virus president before Donald Trump. Donald Trump is an idiot, a moron, a kook, a psychotic lunatic, who's done nothing of of merit his entire life. Not one. He hasn't pushed one thing against another thing in any kind of meritorious way in his entire fucking useless prick shit had fake hair life. And, you know, you people are just so stupid. So anyway, the conversation is about what's good for the Democratic Party. That's the conversation. And people are making the uh, assumption that Bernie Sanders was so much better than Hillary. And the point is, is that on every subject that matters in this election, Bernie Sanders wasn't better than Hillary. He was wackier and even more fanatically wrong in terms of things like immigration. He was more pro-immigration than Hillary. And he would have gotten killed by Donald Trump's fence rhetoric because people really just don't want to hear about how we need to take in more foreigners and we need to placate them more and we need to talk their language and we need to build monuments to their culture and we need to nobody wants to hear, nobody rational in America who's been who's who's lived in America was born here thinks that's a really wonderful idea i mean only lunatics think that's a great idea you, you, only an idiot says yes let's do that we don't have to, but let's do it because it's fun. No, nobody thinks that's fun. And nobody thinks it's going to solve the world's problems. I mean, they'll just bring, send more and more and more and more. There's plenty of poor people in the world. You idiots don't know that. There's a whole big surplus of poverty in the world. And you can take in as much of it as you want, and they're just going to keep making more of it. You don't really understand that if you... If you empty a few of the, the homeless shelters in Mexico, they'll just refill them again. Idiots. Well, anyway. Um, so he had the wrong, he has the wrong answers on these fundamental subjects that are just corrosive, okay? I mean, if, if being a progressive or a liberal means I have to love the idea 
of driving wages into the toilet because that's the practical effect you can't have it both ways you really can't I mean I don't I, you, people I, I mean I shouldn't have to explain this logic to you but excesses in labor create um, pressures that decrease wages that's why the people in China see a lot of people in China a lot of people in India see wages down because too many people that kind of scenario takes place you idiots and then the whole idea of not balancing budgets see see everybody thinks the rich people hate the deficit but the truth is the super rich love it because that's how they make their money see the rich people make money by essentially loaning money I mean it's not technically loans when you buy stocks but the idea is is that their capital that's capitalism they have capital the capital is worth more the more borrowing that takes place so the more the federal government borrows the richer the rich get and so if you want to fight the rich you don't run deficits deficits are anti worker they're pro rich people debt is something rich people want the country to be in it's not something poor people should want the country to be in so anyway the fucking argument you fucking idiots is about the fact that if the democratic party now if it's disposed of hillary and now it builds itself around bernie okay bernie's not an answer and the fallacy that Bernie would have beaten Trump is just bullshit because Bernie didn't have to show up for the three debates and start going wishy-washy on the subject of immigration. As soon as Bernie went on his spiel about how, well, I think Obama deported too many. I think we got to take those eight million people and shove them into citizenship really quick. And yeah, we got to just lower the standards, of course, because that's how you do it quick is you lower the standards of what a citizen's supposed to be. And, uh, you know, yeah, sure, we don't, you know, we don't want to be, uh, you know, anti the huddled masses, do we? Uh, Statue of Liberty and all. Isn't immigration always good? Isn't this still 1842? No, it's not, asshole. It's the new world where people don't have any value whatsoever. Twelve-year-old girls can hang themselves from trees on live stream. And not too many people could give a shit. I mean, it's a completely different world than 1847. All right. Yeah, so that's enough of that. So back to uh, Christopher and uh, Fakey. Uh, so he was making some kind of comment about, okay, yeah, they got a little bit on the subject of men and women, and they're getting on this whole you know performance issues and whether sex gives you you know makes you a better performer less performer you want a little bit of tension obviously i think the tension argument works the sex does wear you out no doubt about it uh <laughs> you know uh what, what did the uh, mickey from um um rocky say uh women's weakens legs um yeah it happens um you know temporarily you can have a little boost calm your brain but uh, eventually you're going to have to take a nap. It's just inevitable. There's a certain amount of nap that sex requires you to take, and you'll inevitably have to take that nap. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, that's all another stuff. Who cares about that? Uh, the more interesting element of this was, yes, yeah, this whole male-female thing, and this, you know, man, men have become, you know, quite disposable, and that's just the truth. Oh, well, that gets to the misery of me thing, so I'll save that for later. All right, so I'll just play some more of this, see if the Jesus freak so, thing there you has, go. has there anything. You go. Scientific verification to back up what I just knew instinctively. So I don't even need, a, you know, I, man, see, this is what I'm talking about. Like, I just knew that, I, I, my intuition was enough to fucking tell me that, because I've, I've seen it. Like, I've literally seen this myself when I've been in relationships. Like, you fucking girl. Okay, so, so he has another stupid theory that somehow women, um, you know, when you have sex, especially, you know, it doesn't even mention wearing a condom or something, that somehow the woman is you know, fed by the semen or something, you know. So they're, they become more powerful. Yeah, right, sure, sure, sure. And then a couple of hours later, she's just full of sauce. You know what I mean? She's just, she's full of fucking, she gets spooky. She, I, mean, I, I mean, obviously women don't have to invest uh, in the, the actual process. I mean, you know, I, I do have some, 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 whatever it is. 
I, you know, I want to save for the right video, though, of just sperm dying. <laughs> just, you, know, it's, uh, you know, I enjoy it. But there's so many of them. It's just this amazing thing that you produce, like, right now, you know, the average male is producing just, you know, whatever, a hundred a second. I don't know what the number is, but it's a preposterous amount of these little fuckers. And so men are a little bit invested, you know, in the sense that, yes, your body's definitely doing some work, even though you don't necessarily feel like you're working. You are working. <laughs> you are making stuff. I mean, complexity. It always takes a little time to make that shit. That's why I, maybe that's why I call it that, you know? It's like, like they'll fucking they get energized, I swear. And, and they get depressed if you don't give it to them. All right, well, that's that. They get depressed if they don't give it to them. I don't know what it is. You would know. I wouldn't. <laughs> They're not giving them to anything. Yeah, I never ran into that. That was never really a problem. I know it's not just the cardiovascular, because I can run for miles and miles. It's not going to make me fucking get increased testosterone about that. But if you ride, like you ride bicycle, fucking you, you do it. Oh yeah, bad, 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 bad idea. If you have nuts and such, bad idea. Not no way. No way. See, I can almost see it being true, but no, he's too man. He's too old to fucking kill five nurses. Five nurses could beat that old guy up. What are you talking about? Are you kidding me? Oh, uh, yeah, fake news website. Fuck you, you almost had to go into son of a bitch. I thought we were friends. Uh, <laughs> Tommy from the rocks. Uh, hey, you Tommy. Yeah, he says he talks to Jesus Freak. Isn't that cute? Uh, I mean, all these hypocrites. Again, it's just so obvious that Jesus Freak is a crook, and they just can't say it. Oh, yeah, okay. Hey, crook. <laughs> oh, man. So I, I saw you run that racket where you stole from the poor and gave to the rich. Yeah, a great Christian racket. Way to go, Christian. Do I think Ray Keenis is 50s? I don't know how old Ray Keenis. How can you double that? He's, he's timeless. Well, he's 40, I believe. Uh, you know, which, yeah, makes makes him a mess for his age. He's one of these guys like fucking him, but he, he, he could be fucking... He could be 45 or he could be 100. The guy's fucking eternal. Well, again, another comparison between me and Brett Keen, which I just think you people are so fucking irrational. It's just silly. Again, it's like Paul's ego. <laughs> Whatever. Weird how you say riding a bike makes you horny. Studies show doing squats raise testosterone levels. Yeah, I said that too, though. I mentioned that too before the bikes. I said do deadlifts and squats. Mostly deadlifts, though. I mean, you do a good set of deadlifts, that'll fucking raise your testosterone through the roof. Uh, temporarily... Uh, you know, I, I, again, all this stuff is just, why do you think they take steroids and do all this other crap? Is because that crap just doesn't work. Yes, working the quads hard really does raise testosterone. It does, man. There's something about the quads. So, and, and, and the thing is, I always skip like that. Look, all this stuff takes time, okay? I mean, you can shoot somebody full of whatever, and it's going to take time before it has any effect on their attitude or their aggression or all that kind of crap. So this is all silly conversation. Anyway, these people ain't chemists or bioengineers or any of that stuff. Well, Jesus. You were in the Marines and, and you've got no sex rock. So see, see, what, see where I'm going with it? But that's, that's also because they're giving you the fucking food with the, um, with the, the saltpeter in it. Like the, like. Alright, so now he has some more theories. Oh, brother. Anyway, <laughs> fake Sagan's conspiracy theories. Uh, and anyway, probably enough of a video. I really, you know, I did. Look, I'll jump right up into here, see if there's something interesting. Yeah. Maybe this is me. Uh, fuck a banana. Tons of people annoy me. Yeah, yeah this, this guy, guy uh, uh, answering man, questions. Fucking quiet, fucking ass, fucking party right. party. I'm going to spend the... Fine, fucking let me figure out how to unblock this fucking baby bitch so we can talk about something interesting. Oh, fuck whatever. Me, yeah, whatever. All right, I'm clicking where it says participants. Anyway. Till next time, and such. I think we're done. Yeah, my dinner. Fuck this shit. Uh, so yeah, hopefully, I'll have a more. You know, there'll be something interesting. It's inevitable that I'm gonna up the game, or not. <laughs> I guess we'll find out. I have plans. It's just that I have to implement them. It's just so much to do. <laughs>